I have dedicated my professional career to the study and control of arthropods. Hi, I am uh, at a place called Yankee Cove. Um, just going to do a quick little short piece right here. Maybe I'll do a longer video later on. Um, but there are about, it's like seven or eight sea lions, stellar sea lions out here. Uh, they're watching us. I'll turn the camera around here. Not very exciting, but they're out there. They were they were doing a lot more. They're a little freaked out by me being this close to them now. Hopefully you can see this. These guys are coming pretty close. I'm gonna So, this is, a uh, the algae here is fucus, uh, called rockweed or bladder rock. Um, <clears throat> you can see it's covered with these, let's see if I can get close, and hopefully this will focus. Yeah, there we go. Uh, these little snails called periwinkles, these are, with the species is, uh, Litorina sitcana, the Sitka periwinkle. And they are all over. And, uh, like a lot of things, here, see, here's one that's actually moving around. Um... These actually don't feed on fucus. Not very many things actually eat the fucus itself. There are some. Um, but for the most part, what it does is it grows um, epiphytes, little plants, diatoms and such that grow on the outside of it. And that's what these things are actually scraping. So here, looking around it, this is, it's great because it, it protects. There's a, a limpet. Hopefully it'll focus here. There we go. Limpets. And uh, lots and lots of barnacles. There's a limpet right there. That's uh, Ladia paradigitalis. The barnacles are Bolanus glandula. Uh, named by, get this, Charles Darwin. Pretty awesome. Uh, 1867, he described this species of barnacle from his collections made during the voyage of the Beagle. This is probably our most common barnacle. It grows everywhere. And I like the name, uh, Bolanus glandula, because these are called, the common name is the A. The acorn barnacle. Um, but the name Bolanus glandula, Bolanus means acorn in Latin, and glandula is acorn in Greek. Um, it's kind of a, a little joke there by uh, by Charles Darwin. So, anyway, I'm going to end this now, just sort of showing the intertidal sea life, upper intertidal sea life. There's some juvenile barnacles that are newly settled, so... So I think this is pretty interesting. Um, I am in the extreme upper intertidal zone. Uh, this is the portion of the beach that gets, uh, well, actually practically never gets covered with water. At the highest tides, uh, we get about, oh, I'd say maybe twice a month or so. This region, uh, the water comes up right up to it, and then waves and such. So this is called the splash zone. And what's fascinating about it is, is that this region, it's too, uh, how to put it, marine to support much terrestrial life, but it's um, not really, I mean, it's, it's, there's not enough water that gets in here to support a whole lot of sea life, but here it is. I mean, there's barnacles. Um, look here, see, there is a limpet, uh, different kinds of seaweeds. Uh, more of the fucus, although this is actually uh, pretty much above where fucus can comfortably live. If you look down down lower, there's a lot more fucus on a lower on, on these rocks. But these barnacles, these periwinkles, um, they somehow are able to make a living in this zone, and it's fascinating uh, that they're able to do it. Um, and what's, I think, the most, what's really interesting, here, let's go over to here, um, about this, is that these things are what we would call semi-terrestrial. Like these snails. This is Litorina sitcana again, the Sitka periwinkle. Um, 
These actually will drown if you put them underwater, and they're not allowed to... If you keep them in an aquarium, they crawl up out of the water to the edge of the aquarium, because they need to sort of dry out. Their gills um, have been modified into something of an air, uh, uh, open chamber that has to remain wet, um, but still has, uh, you know, it still breathes through the air-water interface. So these things, act, it's like the limpets and such, they have to, um, they just, they prefer to be out of the water. And a lot of, in this same group, this, this is Litorinidae, these periwinkles, there's actually, this is not, there we go, focusing, there's uh, terrestrial members of it, not here, in the tropics, there's a number of them that are fully terrestrial, meaning they they never go in the water. Um, they do still live near, like, mangrove swamps and such. Ours are still technically marine, um, but this is a great example of, of a transitional, um, not transitional fossil, a transitional species. This is a, this is that gray area in between air breathing and aquatic uh, that creationists seem to forget exists. Um, they like to think that something completely exclusively marine one day flopped onto the land and uh, started breathing air, ignoring the fact that there are, in multiple taxa, these organisms that exploit both marine and um, terrestrial habitats, and they do so quite well, and they're quite successful at what they do. Anyway, I think it's kind of interesting. Here's, here's kind of a nice periwinkle up here. All right, I guess that's enough. Yeah, before I leave the beach, uh, this is up in the woods on the way back to the car. I found this patch of um, this native plant here. These are, are called rattlesnake orchids, or r rattlesnake plantain. Um, it's a true orchid. Uh, we actually have several around here. Um, these grow up, these will put up a uh, tall flower spike in the spring. Uh, there's a, a dead one right there. Um, but they're really cool. The leaves are awesome. 